So this is going to be a setup guide for the latest release of Batacera. This is Batacera 38. And in this setup guide, I'm going to show you everything you need to get you up and running, including network settings, how to configure your controllers. I'm going to go through scraping options, retro achievements, and how to add your own games into this new release of Batacera 38. So if you're interested in storing this to an old computer or even a new computer, or simply just having it on the USB stick, check this one out. <laughs> Okay then, so before we start today's setup guide for the latest Batacera, which was released literally a few hours today, that's the 16th of October 2023, make sure you hit notifications, subscribe and like if you like the video today, and be sure to check out my other Batacera setup guides. So we're looking at the latest Batacera 38, and this has just come out today. So what we're going to need to do with this is actually download the latest Batacera 38, and we can grab that over on the website. Uh, so if we just get Batacera Linux 38 and we've got several different options here what to install it to uh, so today I'm going to be doing this on desktop or laptop rather uh, shortly I'm going to be doing it on Steam Deck is where well was my Raspberry Pi 400 but let's just stick with the desktop version for this setup guide so download and whilst we're waiting for this one to download we need some software to actually flash this onto USB stick and this is Etcher. What Etcher does is flashes images to SD cards and USB drives. And both of the links are gonna be in my description. Uh, both of these are absolutely free too. So let's take a look at downloading Etcher. Uh, what I'm gonna do is grab the portable version of this and I'm running a 64-bit processor on my laptop. So let's just download the portable for now. Uh, so the portable version of Etcher literally just means that it's just gonna download in a dot executable file. So you don't need to install it to your computer. Uh, if you think you're gonna use it again in future, then just download the installer version of Etcher install it and it'll be on your computer until you uninstall it so right now what we're doing is just waiting for batacera linux 38 to finish downloading and whilst that's downloading what we're going to do is just go to the change log and as we can see batacera 38 is actually titled blue moon and you can read everything what's changed in its update from 37. So we got lots of different features here uh, from Xenia Canary, which is Xbox 360 updates, uh, Tandy and Memorex video information system, that's a new one on me. Uh, we got a bit more support for Visual Pinball. Um, they've added Sega Pico system. And we also got many fixes here, which uh, Batacera 37 struggled with. So there's lots of different changes to version 38 Blue Moon and it's all looking good. And it's actually supporting Orange Pi 5B now, uh, Orange Pi 02 and so on. So what I'm going to do for now is just insert my USB stick and I'm using a SanDisk Ultra 3.0 16GB for this. Just finished downloading. What we're going to do is just open up Etcher and I'm going to show you how to flash this onto USB drive. Okie doke, so I got my Etcher software, which is a portable version, and I've also got Batacera Linux 38, and this is the image you're going to download. So, what we're going to do is just quickly open up Etcher, and once Etcher opens up, we're going to go to Flash from File. And from here, providing that you've got your Batacera image on your desktop or it's likely going to be in your downloads folder, just double left click on the Batacera image. And we'll need to make sure if you've got several different USB devices in your computer, just make sure this is the one you purposely set out to use to flash for Batacera. So just go to change. And so just make sure the USB drive is the correct one. So here's my SanDisk and I'm going to select that and just go to flash. And if you get a little pop Windows command processor come up, uh, just press yes to this. And then it's just a case of waiting for the process to complete flashing. And then afterwards, it's going to go on to verifying or something to that effect. And after that, it's pretty much good to go. And then I'm going to show you how to boot up your computer in BIOS mode to open up Batacera.
So once that's been finished, we can then close down the computer and just remove your USB drive. And I'm going to show you how to boot up into BIOS so we can boot into Batacera 38. Okay, so once your computer or your laptop is completely shut down, what we're going to do is just enter BIOS. Uh, in my case, I'm using an Asus VivaBook. And to get into BIOS from here, I need to just hold down F2 key whilst pressing the power button. Uh, but before we actually go into BIOS mode, you might as well just pop in your USB drive with Batacera 38. So I'm going to pop that in now. And I'm going to press F2. And if I just press power button, we should then boot straight into BIOS. So this is my BIOS menu. And of course, I'm using ASUS, like I say. And what we need to do is actually change boot priorities. So as we can see, uh, my USB drive partition one, we need to boot this in the first priority. So all different BIOS menus are gonna look different. And it's just a simple case of navigating to find your boot priorities. And in some cases, we'll also need to look at the advanced mode in BIOS. And to enter my advanced mode, I'll just press F7. And if you find security, you'll likely find secure boot. And we need to disable secure boot control. If you leave this enabled, you're going to have problems accessing Batacera. So just make sure secure boot control is disabled. And once you've done this, we can now save those settings. And just press OK. And here we go. So it's just resize and partition. So here we go, this is the first time I booted this up. So I'm gonna just turn the sound down just a touch. So what we're gonna do next then is take a look at all of the essential settings that you're gonna to need to get you started with Batacera 38. So I'm using an Xbox controller for this. So I'm gonna just plug this in. And here we go, it's automatically detected it. But let me tell you something, we do need to configure the controller. Uh, there'll be certain systems you're playing and you'll realize that your buttons aren't responding correctly. So to do this, we're just gonna go to main menu by pressing start button. And if we go down to controller in Bluetooth settings, what we're gonna do is go to the first option there, settings controller mapping, and just okay this. And if you hold down, on a single button, we'll then go into configuring gamepads. So it's just a case now of mapping how it says it. So for example, it says East. So I'm gonna correspond this with my B button. South is gonna be A, North is gonna be Y, X, West is gonna be X, and so on. And when you get to the left analog, just make sure you're pressing left and then just make sure you're going to press up and then left. It's not going to ask for a down or right. And also with right analog, up and left. Now, hotkey is a really essential one to remember. Uh, it's going to be a combination or even a single button which exit you from games. So just press a couple of buttons together and normally that will act as your hotkey. So once you've done that, you can then come out. And what we're going to do next is we need to connect this to our network. So if we go down to network settings and what I'm going to do from here is just go down to enable Wi-Fi and that's going to take a good few seconds just to kick in. So then we go to Wi-Fi SID and then you can select your network. And then it's just a case of entering your Wi-Fi key, which is actually your Wi-Fi network password. And then once you've done that, we can press back and that is then going to connect to our network. Okie dokes, and if you can see up in the top right, we now got a Wi-Fi symbol come up and Wi-Fi has been enabled. So we're going to check this out by just going down to updates and downloads, themes. 
and we're now connected. And whilst we're in the themes downloader, uh, Batacera comes with a default theme of this. And I know this is pretty uh, pretty boring, so we can actually download themes directly using this Batacera 38. So we go back to main menu, and if we go down to updates and downloads, themes. Now there are several really nice themes here so take a good look at what you're going to download uh, a couple i recommend is the top option by far a touch of glass is a beautiful theme uh, another one i recommend is the ccar book i really like that one and it's only 462 megabytes download so there's plenty here to choose from and just bear in mind once you download a theme you can actually customize it too so you're not just uh, using a standard default theme as such. So I'm going to go for a CCAD book and just hit install. And now at the top right, you can now see this is downloading. So if we just back out of here for now, whilst this is downloading, if I go to content downloader, I can download something called bezels. And bezels act a little bit like de decorations around your retro games. So it gives it a little bit of an arcade look, for example, decorations on the sides. But that's up for you to check out. Uh, if we go to the bezel project, we can download bezels, which are also kind of like decorations. But again, uh, what I'm going to do is just leave that up to you to look. But it's just a simple case of just downloading the bezels like I've just done there. So if we back out of here, what I've done so far then is showed you how to set your controller up, how to connect to your network and how to download a theme. So if we go to system settings from the main menu, from system settings, if you're getting any issues with your audio output, here it is. So say you've got your computer linked up to say a soundbar, under audio output, you will likely find an HDMI or a soundbar option there to choose. And also under audio profile, if you get any issues with your sound, then something under audio profile should come up. And just down a couple under splash setting, when the system boots up, by default it's using this one, but you can change it from here if you like. So it's not going to harm your computer, it's not going to harm Batacera. If you don't like the new boot splash screen, then just simply go back and put this one to default. And if you want to install this onto a hard drive, say you've got an old computer and you just want to make it a dedicated retro gaming machine, in system settings, if you go to install a new disk, target device, I'm not going to be doing this because uh, <laughs> I want my laptop hard drive the way it is. But you should find your hard drive listed under here. If you select your hard drive, target architecture, if say for example you're using a PC, it's going to be times 8664. And then of course just go and click yes. And then just go to install and that should then install it onto your hard drive. And uh, from then on, you'll then be able to boot directly into Batacera rather than doing it the way I'm doing it stay through BIOS settings. Okay, so that theme is now downloaded. So to actually apply a theme, if you go to main menu, user interface settings, right at the top, you'll find theme set. And here's the CCAR book theme. And I'm going to just press A on this to select it. So we can now see CCAR book is selected. And if I back out of here by pressing B, It'll quickly reboot, and there we go, we've now got a new theme. If we go back into main menu, user interface settings, like I was saying, we can actually customize themes. So theme configuration, and from here, you've got lots of different theme settings to choose from to customize it how you want. Uh, default grid sizes, uh, theme color set. Uh, there's a lot of different options there. So you'll notice that there are several different systems here on Batacera 38. Uh, so for example, we got Nintendo NES, which has got a homebrew game in there, 2048. Uh, we got a Super Nintendo homebrew game in there, Classic Kong. Uh, game Boy Advance has got uh, Space Twins. And rather than keep coming out of Batacera, if we actually move D-pad left and right, we can actually swap machines from here. So under ports, we got a few different ports here. We got Doom and we've got Super Mario War. Under Pi game, 
We've got a couple of games there. Uh, Mega Drive has got all towers, and this is a great homebrew game. In fact, I recommended this on my C64 uh, Top Games of 2019 the other night in number one place. It's a great game, and I really recommend this. Okay, let's go back into the main menu, and this time we're going to go down to sound settings. Now, if the music in the background annoys you, if you go to the volume, system volume at the top, you can either turn this down or turn it up. Music volume will do the same. And under sound settings, we can even change the front end music. For example, now I've disabled front end music. If I go to the menu options, we have no music. But if I enable this, front end music enable, we now have music during the menu settings. And you also notice in Batacera that when you're going through your game collection, you'll have sounds. Again, if we go to the sound options, we can actually disable that as well. So enable video preview audio, just turn that off. And there we go. Our sound for our preview videos is totally gone. I'm going to just turn this back on for now. And there we go. So the part you're all looking forward to is adding your own games to this. So let's get on to this. What I'm going to do is just press F1 on my keyboard. In that, it's going to open up where we can add games. So on the left hand side of the screen, we're going to find ROMs. And we got a massive, massive list here of different folders. And each one of these folders is representing each system that Batacera supports. So there are several different new folders here from the last distribution of Batacera. Uh, but for example, we got 3DO, we got 3DS, Amiga 500, Amstrad CPC. The list goes on with this. There is a lot here this supports. And if we go to the BIOS tab or folder on the side there, this is where our BIOS files can go. So mainly they can loosely get dragged inside of here, but on some occasions we will need to have to place them in particular places in the folders, for example. And if we go to applications, we can then set up more complex systems on Batacera, uh, such as PCSX2 and uh, or PCSS3. So, this is only going to be a very basic setup guide. So what I'm going to do is show you how to add some very basic games. And if you want more complex setup guides, such as PS2, uh, check out my playlist. I've got a ton of Batacera setup guides. So I've just inserted a hard drive and it's got some games on it. So it's going to display in your columns just here on the left hand side. And my hard drive is titled New Volume. And in new volume, I just randomly got a Nintendo NES game, and this is in .zip file extension. I'm going to add this into Batacera just by right-clicking on it, so it's highlighted, pressing copy. And if I go back to the ROMs folder on Batacera, I'm going to just look for the NES folder. And if we go inside the NES folder, you're going to find a couple of folders in there, images and videos. And there's only going to be the artwork in preview video for the homebrew game, which I've shown you just now. The game we just copied, we're going to right click and paste it. So we can now see Chippendale Rescue Rangers in the user data ROMs NES folder. And that's it. So to exit out of here, we're going to go to file, which is located at the top left. And if we go to close window, and what we need to do next is just restart Batacera. So I'm going to go to main menu, game settings. Update game list and really update game list. Just press yes. And now, if we go to NES, we can now see Chippendale Rescue Rangers. So, we need to get some artwork for this in a preview video. So, if we just go to main menu again, scraper, and what we're going to do is go to scraper settings. Now, some recommendations for this is if you leave image source to screenshot, if we go to image source, I always choose box 3D on this, I think it's the best. And what we're going to do is also select video, which is going to give us a preview video. 
Uh, I also recommend fan art if there's no official artwork. So at some point, someone around the world is going to upload some artwork onto Screen Scraper, which is going to act as an alternative. So just make sure that's on. And I'm also going to put manual one. That's going to give us some information. Now at the bottom, you can go over to the Screen Scraper website and it's in French, but you can translate it. And just sign up, it's absolutely free. And once you've got your username and passwords, you can then put them into the bottom here. So I'm gonna just pop in my username. And then once you've entered your details in, you should then see scraping come up the top. And as we can see now, it actually says scrape and finish, update game list to apply changes. So from the main menu, just go up to game settings, update game list and yes. And we now have the artwork and preview video for Chip and Dale. And to open this, I'm just going to press A. And we've also got some nice options around the top in Battlestar 38. And by using my hotkeys, we can then come out of the game. Let's go back into the game and we can actually access retro art so we can further configure things. So if we access the retro art menu, from here you've got many different options ranging from uh, core options to controllers, but I've done many setup guides if you check out my retro art playlist and it's gonna be literally the same as the retro art on this version of Batacera. And something else I'm going to show you is Retro Achievements. Uh, retro Achievements is a free website where we can upload our scores playing particular retro games. So to do this, if we just go back to main menu, game settings, right at the bottom, we'll find system settings and retro achievement settings. If we just enable this, now you need to sign up with Retro Achievement just like you do with Screen Scraper. So again, it's absolutely free. And if you just pop in your username and password, you've got different options then to put things on hard mode, uh, unlocking, make sounds if you select that to yes. Uh, so there's a lot there. Just make sure you enable Retro Achievement to being on and you pop in your username and password. Now, say you're using a Bluetooth controller, like I say, I'm using an Xbox controller, we can actually pair a Bluetooth pad, and this one happens to be Bluetooth. So if I just put this on and put my Xbox controller into Bluetooth mode, and as you can see on the screen, it's now connected, it's been paired. So that's it for today's setup guide of using Batacera 38. But before I leave you, what we're gonna need to do is actually go back into say Windows if that's what you're using on your computer. So what we're gonna do is just go back to BIOS settings. So if I just go down to quit from main menu, and bear in mind, if you ever wanna finish playing Batacera, then you need to shut it down correctly. Otherwise hard drives and USB drives are gonna become corrupt over time. So quit and I'm gonna completely shut down, yes. And here we go, we're now back into BIOS. So just remember that your boot priority will literally probably just have your main hard drive on it, in my case, Windows Boot Manager, that's fine. And just remember, if we go back to advanced mode or something similar to that effect, uh, like I said at the start, different motherboards have got different options, different menus, not all of your BIOS menus are going to look like mine. So what we're going to do is just to remember to go to security, secure boot, and just remember to enable secure boot control. And then we can just save and exit. And here we go, excellent stuff. So that's it for today's latest release of Batacera 38 and the setup guide. Hopefully I've showed you everything you needed to know to get you up and running. Uh, like I said at the start of the video, if you're new to my channel and you like what you see today, hit notifications. 
press subscribe and like it helps my channel out a great deal and it also gets you up to date retro emulation content which i upload pretty much every day so also check me out on social media i'm on tiktok facebook twitter and instagram and just a kind reminder i also accept donations which helps make my channel so much better and next year i'm going to be moving on to bigger and better things but anyways thanks for watching and until next time stay retro